Guys, today we're going to recreate the main menu and the loading screen from Fallout 4. And to do that, um, I'll go through the code that will exist because um, I did that before the tutorial. So I'll just walk through the code and then give you the link to um, clone it on GitHub basically, or just copy it. Uh, it will also include all the images that I've used here, um, although they're not actually my images, so you might want to check um, the licenses if you're going to use it in production or in whatever that you're making. Um, so yeah, before we do anything else, I'll just run the demo and then you'll see for yourself. So what we have here on the left is an image or a screenshot from the game. Um, I think it's probably the Xbox version. And on the right, we have um, our JavaFX application that runs a similar skin um, that is similar to Fallout 4 menu. As per usual, we're not trying to copy the sort of exact details. What we're trying to do is to create something slightly new but inspired by the original version. And so that we can see the resemblance, um, yet we can notice the differences as well. So we have the similar sort of color palette. Uh, we have our um, menu items. So if I click settings, we have exactly the same um, things. They don't actually do anything. They're just placeholders, but you could easily add functionality um, to do basically what you want to do. And um, also here is the loading screen. And what I did was basically took this image, removed that symbol and re um, rewrote the symbol in Java. So what you'll see when you click new, the fade transition goes into this and the symbol is animated. Although the symbol is slightly larger than the original one. So you might want to scale it down, um, scale it down or just create a new one. And apart from that, uh, it comes back um, to the main screen where we can hit exit and exit the application. And that is pretty much it. Most of the code is just a, a single sort of method because I didn't feel like splitting it up because I didn't know what kind of applications you'll be using it for. So, uh, but they are very big. I mean, it's something like 60 lines of code per method probably uh, but you can easily see what um, this does um, ideally you could have rewritten it in CSS uh, possibly but having it all in one place is probably easier so what we have here is right so this is the main um, main entry point of the application. Um, set title, set scene, so these are the standard things that we do. We have our pane as the root node. Um, we have our image view, which loads essentially that background image uh, with nothing else in it. So it's just the image. Um, we set size, size of the image to 12, 18, 720, um, and apply sepia tone effect. So it kind of uh, makes it um, less of a standout background. So as you can see, it's um, quite colorful on this screenshot. And here we're um, sort of toning things down so that the menu can stand out. Right, um, then we have our uh, masker, uh, which is the sort of, it masks the whole uh, image with a black rectangular background, but it has a opacity of zero, so it's not actually visible. It will be visible when we click new, um, and we'll come back to that. We have two menu boxes, um, the left and the right one. They're pretty much exactly the same, except for the width and the height of the boxes. And what the values that we pass um, decide the width and the height. Translate X and Y basically positions the boxes on the screen. Then we have um, many items continue. So we add them in the same order as they're displayed currently. So continue, new, load, settings, crew, exit. And then if we wanted to add some functionality to one of the many items, 
we um, well we need to obtain a reference to that object and then we can uh, call set an action and that, um, that runnable that you pass in um, which is currently a lambda is the method or the code that will be executed when the menu item is pressed. Currently what we do with new we create fade transition and then apply that to our uh, mask rectangle which is going to run for 1.5 seconds and after the animation is finished um, we set the root node where we sort of clear all the children on the root node and set it to the loading screen and when the loading screen finishes it sets all the um, things back to uh, where they were and essentially displays exactly the same screen and the rest should be pretty straightforward we add the item once we've um, created them slightly different functionality for um, item settings action when we click on settings we sort of call this so we add more items to menu box 2 although ideally you should probably set items because you could have other um, other many items that could change the um, content of this box for example load could bring up a list of files that you have a list of, a list of save files that you've had before so that should ideally be set items rather than add items um, and then final item exit on action we simply exit the application and that is it <clears throat> so if we go to uh, menu box is that thing uh, that frame essentially so we have our rectangular background um, and then we set fill with menu background color I have all the colors in this sort of kind of class holder or container or whatever that you can reuse and as you can see there's quite a lot of green color um, so you can change that to whatever you want your uh, main color scheme to be then we have line top line bottom which are these ones um, we also set stroke to black so that it kind of distinguishes from the background what else and then we have the main sort of layout container from JavaFX, which is vertical box because when we add items they're added vertically so they're just um, pushed onto that, into the box as if it was a stack and just two simple methods add items which essentially calls just add item and we add items to the children of the vertical box then we got our menu item which uses this custom font from um, this folder called Roboto um, which is also available and will be uploaded to um, GitHub. Also make sure that you've got the um, correct license if you wanted to use it in the game or whatever application that you're making. Then we have, um, so we create menu item by supplying our, our name of the menu item and the width of the item. So the width is essentially exactly the same and the name of the item would be um, the things that you see on the screen. So continue, new, load. Uh, we translate X, so we slightly move it to the right. And then we have our font. We fill it with um, menu text color. We stroke, we add stroke black because uh, um, we can see the outline. And to sort of <clears throat> make the outline even more visible, we add um, drop shadow using black color. Finally, we have that selection rectangle that you can see whenever you um, hover with your mouse or cursor. And then we apply um, this color, which is also red, uh, also blue, what is it? Greenish, yeah, there we go. Um, then we have 
visible faults because um, when we just when we are not hovering or when we are not selecting any of the items, um, the rectangle is invisible. So that was the uh, original idea. And then what you have is blur. We apply blur to the selection so that the um, sort of borders of the rectangle are kind of well, they're actually blurred, yeah, and that's why we're applying the effect to sort of go with the theme of Fallout. Then you have uh, children. These are the children of stack pane that we use as the parent to contain all of these things. And these are the event handlers. So we add set on mouse entered, and then that calls on select, which is implemented here. So we set fill of the text to black, as you can see, and we make the selection rectangle, that thing, that green one, visible. And we also make the shadow slightly smaller so that it doesn't sort of overwhelm the letters. On deselect is uh, basically when we um, remove the mouse, remove the cursor from the element, which is set on mouse exited. And we kind of call everything in reverse. So we make, um, we call fill again menu text, um, set visible false, so the rectangle becomes invisible. And then we make shadow um, slightly larger or the radius, the radius of it. And finally, we have set on action, which takes a runnable, um, and this is essentially the code to run when one of these things is clicked. And what we do is we call fill transition to change the color from, um, I'll do it on exit, from yellow to green and then actually run the thing. So instead of just um, calling action that run immediately, we kind of um, have a 45, 0 0.45 second delay before calling the action. You can obviously change that to whatever you want um, this thing to be. Finally, we have our loading screen, which, a, which is that one. So if I just run this again. Yeah, uh, the main part is the loading um, symbol that does the animation bit. And that is, well, first of all, create loading screen by passing width, height, and the action when the loading um, is finished. We then load in an image, which is the loading, which is that image without that symbol. And then we make the symbol, we place the symbol where it should be, and we finally call timeline set and finished. Um, the action that needs to be run, and also we don't, uh, we must not forget to add this to add these nodes to the list of children, so that they are displayed on the screen. The symbol is um, actually that would be easier to use probably. So that is the symbol in the bottom right corner, and first of all we apply the blur effect to the whole thing, um, to the whole symbol uh, or the parent of that symbol. And we then have our top, mid and bottom rectangles. Although we do make um, a few changes to the rectangles by setting arc width and height to these values so that they're um, sort of it feels like they were um, ellipses. And we use colors um, loading symbol, which is exactly the same color as the text. So it's um, bright green. And these are width and height of each of the rectangles, each of these um, things. We then position them top bottom, we translate X and Y to uh, where we want them to be. And this is relative to the 
sim parent and parent of the symbol and not the absolute value of the symbol. These would be absolute values of the symbol where we place them, but these are relative to the symbol itself. Finally, um, if you notice, we have a few circles in there. So one, this is the sort of background circle, um, which is quite large. And we set stroke width to two. So it's kind of um, standing out. Then we have circle two, which is the one that is being animated. So in fact, this is the only thing that um, is animated within this symbol, which is exactly the same at first. Uh, well, it's created with the same values, pretty much. We use a different um, stroke width, and then we set radius to two, so that it's very small. And this is needed to make the animation happen centrally. We then animate this radius from two to 20, and then we do that every frame. And finally, we set cycle count to our timeline and then play um, our animation. And when the animation is played five times, it calls back the um, this method that we passed in, so basically code to run. And also, um, that is the point that is right in the middle of the symbol. So again, we initialize it exactly with exactly the same value so that it's positioned properly. And we set its radius to one. So it's um, like really tiny point. And again, we add all of, all of these things to the children of our um, symbol. And we pass it back as a symbol object which we then again position um, using absolute values and that is it because when we create the symbol it starts animating immediately you might want to change this behavior to be something different for example have a method called animate and that would actually call this rather than just animating from the start um, and yeah it should be really easy to disassemble to um, pieces if you wanted to change something because um, each of um, basically each of your games will have slightly different functionality slightly different theme so you might want to add a bit of sort of um, something that stands out particular for your game rather than just um, having exactly the same menu or loading screen and you could easily um, hook this up into your own game by basically changing a little bit of this um, and a little bit of um, various other menu items and their functionalities. So for example, new game would um, deal the transition um, if you do need a loading screen, because most games, most 2D games should easily load up um, without any long loading screens if we're talking about simple JavaFX games. So you might want to remove that into something add like um, start new game and which would replace children of the root node with your own objects and then you start drawing on them so the game basically starts from there and on and continues. And you might also want to implement something like a key event handler um, so add it to the scene and then say when you press escape um, you show this menu you might also copy all of this into a, a standalone class called menu and have it as an object which would be easy to sort of add to the root node and remove from the root node um, if you were um, to do something like an in-game menu for example and apart from that, I think we're done for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.